Uh, and now Roger's going to give us um, a principal's view uh, of maintaining excellence. So thank you, okay, Roger. Okay, uh, th thanks very much. And can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, and good morning. Um, I am going to give a principal's view of how our governors worked with myself and the senior team to get outstanding. And I'm going to take you through what we did. And a lot of what Carol has said and alluded to, you'll hear me say, but probably in a little different way. Uh, the first point of, of, of order I've got with Carol, uh, I think I've got the best clerk to the corporation, Carol. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, uh, I'll, I'll take issue with you on that one. Okay. What I want to do with my presentation, firstly, is give you a little bit of uh, the history of uh, where we were, milestones we put in place, where we were going, how we were going to get there. Because it was all about buy-in and everybody had to buy in. So I'll give you a little bit of uh, history. I'll give you a little bit about what we did in terms of planning and what we did to implement it. And then I'll talk to you about the, the three years, 2007-10 in particular, on keeping the ambition alive. Because to keep the ambition alive for three years isn't easy. You know, it's a long time, it's three years, a long time to keep everybody on message. Now, everybody on message, I mean everybody on message in the college, not just the governors, but every single person on message for three years is, is, a, is a tough call. The training and development that we put in, and then, of course, you know, the week of inspection, what happened, and the reward that the governors got as a result of it. So, uh, in 2007, the college uh, was Ofsteaded and got uh, good with outstanding features. If I take you back to 2003, uh, it was satisfactory with good features. From 2003 to 2007, the governors were good. We'd got a consistent good in terms of what they were doing, how they were doing it, and, and all the rest of it. We were good, but they weren't outstanding. So what we did in 2007, I said to the board, I'm going to craft a new strategic plan. We are on the runway. We know we're good with outstanding features. The goal is to be outstanding. And I charged every department in the college to, ri to rise to that. And I looked at the governing body and said, you're, you're a department. You know, basically, are you going to sign on to this with every department in the college? Because I was trying to say, you've got no place to go, really, but we all want to do this. And, of course, they did. And um, we started then selling that vision to, to, to the staff. And I can remember standing up at staff meetings, uh, as you do as principal, and saying, you know, who wants to be satisfactory? And the, the actual uh, message that I was saying is that if, if we do this and if we do well, all your CVs go up. Because, you know, everybody wants to be connected to an outstanding provider. You know, our employers that we work with, you know, it opens doors, you get more win-win partnerships, you know, you've got very strong messages to sell. So uh, th there was a big, big agenda for us. In 2008-9... Self-assessment for governors was good, as I say, but, but not outstanding. So in March 2009, we did a big planning push uh, with, the governors, uh, with the governors to meet their ambition. And, you know, I said to the, to the governing body, you know, we all need to go forward with this because we have governor links, like I'm sure many of, many of you do. The governors are in and out of the college. Uh, and if they were engaging staff in departments and so on, then the message had to be consistent we had to drive a consistency of, of message. So in spring 2009, the governors agreed their action plan. And we set um, targets for meeting attendance, 75% for full corporation board uh, is, is, is a typical one that we set. And we have six corporation board meetings a year. We sometimes have a, um, one for exceptional circumstances, but generally speaking, <coughs> six corporation board meetings a year. Um, six o'clock while eight o'clock. They don't go past eight o'clock. They are two-hour meetings. They're focused. The um, papers go out ten days before. We assume everybody's read them when they get there. So, you know, it cuts down on, on, on the time. So meeting attendance was 75%. We got them all uh, into uh, Moodle access where they could access minutes and materials that we were uh, working on at the college so that they could, could get access. And we put right at the centre there the learner voice. It was imperative that we got the governors to work with our learners. We are a medium-sized college, about 11,000 students. 
mixed economy. I've got about a thousand HE students. We do work-based learning. We, we, do, we do everything you'd expect us to do as a, as, as a GFE. So we've got a very interesting mix of learners. So, you know, I was saying to the governors that you, you need to get to know the student body. Yes, we do have um, students on our uh, board, but they're representative of a much wider uh, student body. So it was imperative that um, our governors got to know um, the, uh, the learners. So I'll come on to that uh, shortly. And it was about the quality of governance. You know, how were they going to drive up their own performance? And we almost did a 360 degree sort of appraisal. How are you going to measure your performance? How are you going to drive up your performance? You know, how are we going to do this so that everybody have a 20 strong board? How, how is everybody going to make sure that you know, we've got a quality of governance? So when the Ofsted inspector calls, that you, know, you can um, engage the Ofsted um, inspectors you know, with a very sound, robust evidence base about what it is you do. And college knowledge enhancement, you know, um, we pair our governors with different areas of the college and then cyclically change them. So that over a period of, let's say, four years, and then if they're re-elected for eight years, certainly over that period of time, it's highly likely that they will have been linked and paired with a number of departments across college. That's really, really good practice because it allows that governor then to get an, a bit more of an overview of what's going on in the college. And, of course, it brings them into different staff, different students, different employers, different issues in different departments, and so on. So the, the, it's, it's a really good cocktail, and it builds their knowledge in terms of, you know, what it is the college is doing. The other thing that we do, I produce a principal's report twice a year, and it's about 50 pages, and it highlights every single area of the college. So it's like the ultimate aid memoir for the governor, because you, you can take it home, I, I take it to a corporation board meeting, they can take it home, and they've got it at the fingertips, and it's about the immediate past six months. And, it, and it's really, really good. We've been doing that now for a number of years, and they, they wouldn't let me take that off the agenda because it's a valuable document, uh, about 50 pages, but it's about the entire college. So it's a really good uh, piece of uh, um, reporting for, for them. We have open evenings where uh, governors invite employers, heads of schools, primary, secondary, voluntary sector in to talk to governors. A bit like an MP's <coughs> surgery. And we do that. And that's absolute engagement of your community. And what's been said this morning is true. You know, we, we don't just serve a community. There are micro-communities within our community. And we try to engage them all. And we, we have open evenings. They come in and we will have... Um, you know, Q&A sessions, we'll talk about it, what it does, the chair will say something, the vice chair will say something, other governors will say something, and we get a dialogue going there. So very well attended, and the, the governors, you know, uh, in uh, big support of that. So our main objective was to be judged outstanding in 2010. We guessed that because we were inspected in 2007 on a cycle, we would be um, inspected sort of 2010, and indeed we were. So, you know, everything was going um, to plan. And in the 910 um, self-assessment, that was the self-assessment that we went into our inspection with, the governors um, got a grade one in self-assessment. That had to be validated by Ofsted, but we internally validated it as a grade one. Now, you know, um, I'm quite worried at the moment because there's, there's too many colleges in this last year's cycle not doing so well with Ofsted. And, you know, um, and what I'm picking up is that there's overgrading. And it's really dangerous. And governors th th themselves need to be really stoic in terms of, you know, when they approve the college, the college self-assessment, this was theirs, but the college one, that, you know, the, you, your bottom overgrading. Because Ofsted will, will, will it, it's, you know, they will go for that. 
if, if this is it. When I got the call about our inspection in 2010, and in those days it was three weeks, and I had a conversation with the lead inspector when he notified me, and, and basically, without saying it, I said, you know, we're going for outstanding. They drafted two more HMIs in. I was overwhelmed with the number of full-time HMIs that came to my college because I had intimated in that phone call we were going for outstanding, but I never said outstanding. It was very articulate in the way that I put that over, um, and we got a lot more um, full-time Ofsted inspectors coming in. We had the part-time ones, but we got a lot more full-time ones coming in. So we were um, robustly challenged. So... Three years, eight, nine, ten, keeping the ambition alive. Um, you know, we wanted to end up with uh, governance grade one, college grade one, and the process of getting outstanding, you know, it didn't just happen. So the corporation set themselves measurable targets. Usually find, you know, if you can measure it, it usually gets done. So, you know, measurable targets were set. We put in a lot of training and development. And, uh, for example... Every uh, corporation board meeting that we have is prefixed by a 10-minute training session. We have that as m mandatory. 10-minute training session, and it's about something that's happening at the college. So 10 minutes doesn't sound a lot, but it really does help. Really does help. Your first 10 minutes on the agenda, and remember, our, our agendas don't exceed two hours. 10 minutes, you know, training some aspect of the college. Powerful with Ofsted, because we've got a trend of that now running like a golden thread through, through years. Monitoring of progress. The governors were very, very good at monitoring pro progress. Standards committee, but also themselves, you know, actually challenging one another about the progress they were making. And what we did for our governors is give them a quality improvement plan. And this is the governor's quality improvement plan. In line with all the curriculum areas and support areas, you know, all my support areas, by the way, at North Lindsay College, have a self-assessment. It's not just the curriculum of a self-assessment. Every single support area in my college has a self-assessment. And they are graded in the same way, you know, one to four. So everybody buys into it. So if I put my curriculum areas and my... Um, support areas together, I've got 31 departments across college. They all play in self-assessment. Important. And quality assurance, the, the checks and balances, um, they wanted to make sure that they were on track. And of course, the QIP, the Quality Improvement Plan, <coughs> helps the governors do just that. And we followed that one up with setting new KPIs, new gover governance KPIs, beyond outstanding. So their current um, plan is beyond outstanding. And Carol made the point that, you know, you get to outstanding, you've climbed the mountain, you've got to stay there. And, you know, that's difficult. And, you know, so th this plan for the governors is how they're going to stay at grade one. So, you know, we've, we've called it beyond um, outstanding. So that, that's the current one that uh, they have. Uh, the clerk to the corporation did a number of research and development uh, visits, uh, workshops, best practice conferences, you know, to, to actually bring into the college where was the good practice. If there was good practice out there, you know, don't reinvent a wheel, tap into it and bring that in. So the, the clerk at, at North Lindsay went out there to actually look for and find and bring in to enhance what we were doing. And, and we still do that because, you know, it's good practice. And no governor or member of corporation worked in isolation. It was very much a team approach. They were in this together. You know, this, there was no kickback from any, any member around the board table. We were in this together. And I know time's been talked about, 20 hours, 30 hours, and so on. And I have to say, you know, when, when, you, when you're going for something like this, because once you've got it, it's, it's such a powerful vehicle in itself to use in a community because you can fluff your feathers, it's a great thing to do, but my God, you know, it's a door opener in the community 
an absolute door opener because people want to be associated with success. And if your local college is, you know, a successful college, then, you know, it will open a, a lot of doors. Most of my governors are working governors. Not all, but some retired governors, but most of my governors are working governors. And it's a very cosmopolitan board. I've got lawyers, I've got uh, solicitors, you know, you, you'll have the same thing, I'm sure. Very cosmopolitan, managing directors, private sector companies. And we run Lindsay, North Lindsay, as a business. As a business. Our products are education, but we run it as a business. Over the period, 7 to 10, we had a reasonably high stability. Again, very helpful when you're going for something like this, because if you've got too many governors going, you know, you've got an imbalance there of, you know, message and expectation. Our run from 7 to 10, we had a reasonably high um, stability, which helped. All our governors were highly motivated. You know, really up, up for it, really motivated, wanting to do well. And um, they were very uh, good with staff and student interaction. I'll come on to that. We set up Cross College, we've had these now years, learner focus groups, where governors come in, they'll get groups of learners, let's say from performing arts, art and design, motor vehicle, engineering, um, whatever the subject area might be, and between 12 and 1, lunchtime, they will leave work, come in, put a sandwich lunch on, and they will have 20, 25 learners to chat to. How's it going? What do you want to tell us? Etc. Got years and years now evidence of, of that. Very, very powerful uh, learner focus group. We have Meet the Governors, where we have staff and learners at the end of the day can come and meet the governors. Governors will come in, two or three governors will come in, and you can meet the governors. So we're forging these links all the time. Non, non threatening sort of environments, you know, all about improving and listening. Spotlight and Governors, we have um, an internal newsletter. I'll go back to the one I've missed in a second. Spotlight on Governors, great vine we call it, internal newsletter. And we do a pen portrait of our governors, like a mini CV. These are your governors, and they provide us a photograph. They write the narrative. So my previous chair was an ex-student at North Lindsay College. And, you know, he, he was an engineer, managing director of a multinational, uh, but he did his uh, ONC, HNC at North Lindsay College. And it's great to get that pen portrait there because it brings alive who, who, who these governors are to staff and to students because that goes through as the internal. Um, we have governor SMT learner workshops where myself and the senior management team and governors will bring in all learners, whether they're HE, FE, work-based learning, apprentices, whatever, and talk to them in, in workshops. We have link governors, we have events, and we have governor presentations to curriculum areas. This is powerful, absolutely powerful, where a lot of our governors will come in and they will go to, let's say, engineering, and they will talk to students about the world of work. 16 to 18 year olds about, you know, okay, you're doing a, an MVQ level two in engineering. You know, some of you will be an, a, employed, some of you won't be. They'll talk about the world of work. And that's really great because the students then really get, get some good knowledge being passed down by governors. So you've got that in, interaction there at the world of work. And we have governors coming in, in and out all the time to take those sessions with students. So you can see that our governors are spending a lot of time coming into college. But they're spending a lot of that time interacting with learners. Interacting with learners. And that's, that's really powerful for us. <coughs> Training and development. I've, I've said at every corporation meeting, we, we highlight an aspect of college life. Our training schedule to governors is put out to them a year in advance. So we might do eight to ten training schedules, we might do one on safeguarding, we might do one on finance, we might do one on strategy, we might do one on curriculum development, but they're all 
put out a year in advance so they know when they are and these are all additional meetings over and above the board meeting and subcommittee meetings. These are additional meetings. Access to external events, you know, like um, I'm sure happens at, at your institutions, you know, people can come, come to this event, they can go to the OC conference, they can go to di different um, events. Um, I've, um, over the last five years, brokered, um, coming up to five now, North American partnerships. You know, I send kids from Scunthorpe over to Nebraska, to California, uh, and the experiential is, is tremendous. I've hooked up with uh, the latest colleges in Toronto, and they've just come back from there. A governor's been over. Brilliant. And what we do, I send managers over as well to work shadow, and then they come back to us and work shadow, and we're doing that now with governors. Um, You'll hear a lot about the American community colleges and what they do, community colleges. You know, I've said to John Bingham, um, chair of AOC, many times that you know, um, we've got some of the best pra practice in this country that I've seen. And I've been to the American Community Colleges Conference. I've presented papers at the American Community Colleges Conference and at the Canadian Community Colleges Conference. And I can tell you, uh, and I've got... Uh, four colleges now that we work with, we're streets ahead. What we don't do is shout about it. What they do is shout about how good they are. Actually, they're not as good as they think. But we've started now putting governors in the international mix. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. Specific focus, 7 to 10, was on performance, financial monitoring, the learner voice, L&M, and fulfilling legislative um, requirements. So they were the the four key drivers as we went up to, um, you know, inspection. So, what happened? There's the inspection result, and these were just taken from our um, um, Ofsted, which is on the website, and I'm, I'm sure you could, you, you could have a look at this. But I'll just give you a minute, just have a, have a look at some of those, because I just want to pick one or two things out. They're just the headlines. Quality uh, improvement arrangements are outstanding. All staff meticulously identify where they can make improvements through good use of data and learners' views. Further on in the report, the same thing is said about governors. Okay? So the, the stuff that we do is in detail. In detail. Because, you know, nobody wants to waste the time. You know, we haven't got time to waste, so it, all the time the governor's put in is very, is very focused and directed towards getting out every, everything we can. And I'll just pick out one or two more things. Governance is outstanding. Governors have set a clear and ambitious strategic direction based on a thorough analysis of available options. Uh, they strongly support the principal and senior managers, and it, and it goes on. I was in a workshop yesterday, and um, I, I, mean, I couldn't get my breath. I, I was just amazed uh, what I was hearing about the interaction between senior managers and corporation boards, and it was diametrically opposite to what I experience about tensions between SMTs and boards. And I'm sat there thinking... You know, I've worked with six chairmen over 16 years as a principal, running two colleges, about 85 to 90 governors. I haven't had attention at all. And yet, this is based on survey work that's just been carried out. So, you know, the relationship between the principal, the senior post holders, the people that come to your board meetings, and the corporation is massive. It's all about people and how people get on. That, that's what it's about. And the six chairs that I've had, uh, really strong, you know, challenging chairs. Uh, did start with brown hair, but, you know, that shows you. But at, at the end of the day, that's how it should be, and Carol alluded to that. You know, um, your job as governors is to robustly challenge what's put in front of you by the principal and senior team. Uh, to advise and be critical friends. But it's all the team. We're all in this together 
It's one team. So I'll stop there, Susie, because I think I'm just coming um, to time. Um, but the final point I would like to say is, you know, if, if you're in the, in the business of getting your institution to outstanding, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. You need to plan it. Don't rush the fence. Take a view of where you are today. How are you going to get there? You know, it's not rocket science. You need buy-in, but you can do it. Wherever you are today, and you want to get outstanding, even with the revised inspection framework and all the sort of tweaks that's going to you can do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roger.